Okay, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us um, this, this afternoon for us, but it might be morning or night for you, wherever you are. Um, so we're not actually, none of us are Kate Erica. Kate Erica is the organiser of these webinars. Um, and so my name's Anastasia Fletcher. And I'm Claire Cunningham. And um, we're going to talk to you about phonics in the early years and the journey of phonics from our experience um, and the things we have in our school, in our classrooms, and the experience we've had together over the years. And um, we are going to turn our camera off now, if that's okay. So please let us know if you can't hear us or see us by putting anything in the chat, um, and we'll have a look at the chat throughout the webinar. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So, as we said, um, my name's Anastasia Fletcher, and uh, I've been teaching for eight years in the early years foundation stage. I started my career in London many years ago, and I did two years in London and then four years in Dubai. And I've now been teaching for two years and in my third year in Hong Kong. And I've been teaching for phonics for all of that time with the early years, with um, reception and nursery. And my main phonics training is Read, Write, Ink Phonics, which we'll talk about a bit later on. Um, but I've also been trained now in um, different um, phonics. Um, what's the word? Programs. 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 Yeah, thank you, Claire. Different phonics programs and schemes. And we've used, um, we used two or three in, in our phonics teaching in cycling school here in Hong Kong. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit later on as well. Hi, so I'm Claire Cunningham and um, Far From Home, started my career in Scotland and taught there for many, many years. Um, I specialised in year one and um, then when I moved over to Hong Kong with my husband and son two years ago, I, I then um, went into early years, which I thoroughly enjoy. And I've been teaching phonics um, for all of that time also. And it's just been fascinating for me seeing the journey from the very beginning um, in the early years through to year one and the, the other primary stages. I've been working alongside Anastasia now for two years and I am trained in Jolly Phonics um, as well as other schemes as well and um, have worked hard at trying to improve literacy and attainment. Um, throughout the stages that I've taught at. Um, so welcome to the webinar and thank you for joining us today. Okay, so the outcomes for the session, hopefully this will be roughly 30 to 45 minutes. It might be less or more, depending on how much we talk, but also how much you want to say or ask, which we, we welcome throughout. Um, the main aim is for us to be um, reaching out to anyone who is new to phonics, or isn't confident to teach phonics, to have some more awareness of why and how we teach this way and the impact this has on the children in your classroom. And for anyone who is confident and experienced, please share any ideas or resources or good practice with us throughout by putting anything in the um, question box or at the end we will have an open session for anyone to share. Um, we'll talk about our experience, the way we teach, and as well as how children learn from a very early age. And we want people to be aware of the journey that children go on and, and that children access phonics really differently. And we've seen lots of different children and begin to write at all different stages. And it's not just about the writing, it's about so much more than the writing and all of the work that goes in before that. And there are loads of milestones that children go, get to before they successfully read and write independently, which is our main aim, independent reading and writing. We will also recommend some resources for you. Um, at the end of the session um, and like I said please type any questions or anything you want to say as we go along and we'll try to keep an eye on the chat box and then we'll ask the participation or any input throughout and this is also being recorded and will go onto YouTube later on with um, Kate Erica's help so you'll be able to access it again or share it with any colleagues in your school so thank you very much. So what is phonics? Um, phonics is a way of teaching children how to read and write and unlike the way that I was taught through sight words and looking at the shape of words, um, phonics provides the opportunity to learn skills that can be used to read almost any word and as soon as you start that, um, the journey of phonics, 
children very quickly pick up the skills and transfer that into their play. Um, and they love to um, read and write, um, mark make, and also um, in their play, you will see them creating their shopping lists and treasure maps. So these skills stay with the child throughout their life and provide their stepping stone into their literacy journey. So it's so crucial for us teachers that it's um, taught well and that the children can access all the different stages um, in order for them to be successful. We use a synthetic approach to phonics and this research has shown that it's the most effective way of teaching children to to read and to write, and the one with the greatest amount of success. Phonics involves matching the sounds of spoken English with the individual letters or the groups of letters, and there are about 44 different sounds. Um, and as you're aware, the English language is so complex, so this approach to phonics is um, a wonderful way for our EAL children uh, to be able to access the English language and to then um, meet all of those milestones through progression as well. Okay, so there are two sort of main parts to phonics. Um, there's the knowledge, but there's also the skills when children apply the, the knowledge that we've taught them. So as teachers, we, we teach the children what each sound looks like, whether that's a single sound, so that, like the sound t, t, t or the letter T, or a digraph, so two sounds together, like the sound th, or a trigraph, like the sound air, which is three sounds together. And children then learn what print is, how to access it, for example, how to read it in a book or on a sign. And this knowledge is taught in lessons, um, but also should be part of everyday teaching within the classroom. We then give them the skills to use these sounds independently. So the aim in teaching phonics is that children can quickly and confidently learn how to read and write, and they can segment and blend words without help. So segmenting is the skill of breaking words into their individual parts. So uh, that's helping them to be able to write. So we teach children to hear the sounds in the word that they are saying, and then to say how many sounds there are, such as the word cat, they can hear cat, so they can hear three sounds. So already a child can then write that word by themselves without asking an adult, without asking how do you spell this word, they can, they can sound it out themselves. And they will then know um, that they can hear the sounds in that word and then start to write uh, longer words. Um, but at first they'll start to write CBC words like cat, mat, sit, um, put, so there's three sound words. Um, and then blending is the skill of saying each sound by itself and then blending into one word, which is the skill of reading. So again, they'll begin with short words, such as cat, mat, sit, and then progress on to longer words, where they might learn other skills, such as um, syllables and chunking into um, shorter parts of a word, to then blend it together. But they'll need to know trickier sounds for that one. So uh, yes, yeah, so the, the, they need to have the knowledge, but they also need the skills to go with it. And that's what we teach them on the journey of phonics. So I just want to check if anyone else wants to come into the, the webinar now. Okay, thank you. Okay. So the very first stage, this is phase one, and I can't stress how important this stage is. It's called phonological awareness. And this is where our children hear the different sounds. They listen really carefully. You're training them to hear the sounds of the spoken language. And it involves lots of different skills from their listening and auditory to spoken and verbal. At this stage, there is no print at, um, for the children for them to look at. It's all about their listening and their spoken language. So it's really important when children, especially our EAL children, that they are exposed to lots of different um, communication activities and um, they're able to explore um, different environments. They can be inside and outside, and that they can go for um, different listening walks and also playing just lots of fun games. And I'm sure that we do it naturally anyway as early years teachers, getting children trained into listening to, listening for their name, perhaps, if um, they're playing musical instruments, we would be saying which ones are loud, which ones are quiet. Can they hear the different sounds at the beginning of words? 
And there's also, um, we want the children to be able to hear, like for alliteration, for example, if we had our magic bag with lots of different um, objects in it, um, can they hear the words that um, the initial sound of those well, those words? For example, bell, bike, boy. Oh, they all start with the initial sound. B, b, b. Which one is the odd one out? And you can play those games with them. And um, for example, dog starts with a d, so that's not the same. Again, then we can go into our blending. We can ask the children to, can you come and sit on the m at? Oh, I know that when I put those words together when I'm blending, the teacher's meaning mat. So it's exposing the children to lots of different phonological awareness in the early years. We can do that by joining the children in their play to extend their talk and to enrich their vocabulary. We can encourage children to use language for thinking by asking open-ended questions. How does it feel to be in the tunnel? What can you hear? What can you see? Children enjoy experimenting with different sounds and they love to make up their own um, instruments and then explore the different sounds that they're making, whether it's a loud um, or soft, or whether it's um, a rustle sound. And also children um, explore as babies the different animal sounds. So instinctively, children come into school knowing the different sounds that animals make. And phonological awareness supports all of our children and it helps to lay the building blocks for our reading and writing because if children can't hear the sounds at the beginning of words, then they will struggle with phonics. And research has shown that without phonological awareness, we can already um, determine the success a child is going to have when they start reading. So this has been a very, very difficult, unusual and special year for all of us um, since the pandemic worldwide. And who would have ever thought that we would be turning to a virtual classroom? So for us here in Saikung, we provided children with our virtual uh, school experience and we continued with our phonics journey. And during that time, we decided that it was really important for children to be exposed to lots of phase one activities for all of that listening. And so we've um, continued that to create those foundations so that now there's a readiness that we have our children back in school. So our children um, have only just returned to us on half days from the 29th of September and they, when the last time they were in school was at the Chinese New Year, the 25th of January. So it's been such a long time for all of our children and I'm sure your children too. So we have to be very mindful about the pace that we are going at and also just about where the children are in terms of confidence. I know that a lot of children in my class, they have been using their mother tongue which isn't um, always necessary English. And so they are lacking confidence and it's about tapping into their interests, getting them to feel comfortable, getting to know your children and taking it from there. So in an ideal world, we would be teaching both discreetly and teaching directly with our children. When we're talking about discreet, that means um, using our environment as an another teacher where the children can go and access and they can explore the sounds that they've learned, they can mark make, they can use magnetic letters or little stones uh, to make words, they're just exploring. And the direct teaching is when it's adult led and we might be teaching a new sound, revisiting previous sounds and taking the children through that phonics journey where then they apply in their play um, the phonics that they've been taught. We start phonics in nursery and the children uh, have that for three times a week. And again, it's the phase one. And when the children are secure with all of that listening, all of the phonological awareness, then they are introduced to the sound and correlating the sound to the letter sound. So, 
it can be difficult at times when children do come in um, because they might be talk, they might be speaking using the alphabet letter name and talking in capitals A B C and for phonics we need the children to recognise the sounds so that's really important and we will touch on that for um, our next session. Um, in reception, I am, I'm a reception teacher and we teach phonics four times a week and we're ready to have our children start in phase two. Some of the children already have accessed some of those sounds and when we've um, finished our transition time, um, we will be looking and assessing the children and then making sure that they are um, having challenge and that the pace of the learning, um, it suits all of their needs. Again, phonics is something that can be tailored to the needs of your children and you can see how fast you need to go. Um, sometimes um, we can use teacher four, four sounds a week, but that can be just depending. And as I said, it's really unusual circumstances um, just now in our teaching career. I wanted to share with you a magical moment this morning for me. Um, so the little boy who's standing on the crate has only said good morning to me, and that's been virtually. And even now when I'm saying register, he's only speaking um, and saying good morning. But I can tell that he's, his comprehension skills um, are there. He has been used to speaking his mother tongue for all of these months. And so when today we were outside, he was able to build, this was an, an aeroplane. And what he was doing was he was using the crates and then all of his friends joined in. And although there was no communication, you can see that the children are really happy there and it's about building up that confidence. And so when I was able to say, um, what are you building? And I gave him the option, he was then able to tell me because it was of interest to him. And so that for me, that's a starting point for him just to be mindful about that confidence and just nurturing the, those children. And it's not about making up for lost time. I think it's thinking about their health and well-being and um, just getting it right again for every child. So um, what does the phonics journey actually look like? And this is um, from experience really um, over the years um, because every child is very different but generally they do follow the same sort of journey just at different times when they are ready. Um, so it's really important that it is seen as a journey and that it is different for everybody you, there is no set way that children learn. We do teach them in a, in a, um, in a set way, but the children don't always um, pick, up, pick it up at the same time. They're not always ready, and we'll touch on that a bit more later. And there are so many skills to learn along the way, and it can't be rushed or forced. Children are ready to write when they're ready to write, and those skills that come before that are the most important part for us. Um, they'll pick the skills up at different times and some might need to spend more time in certain areas like some children might need to spend more time on their fine motor skills to make sure their hands are ready or the letter shapes or blending or some children might just need a motivation to write for a purpose which again we'll look at a little bit later. So the journey for, for me and Claire looks a bit like this. So the children start with listening just like Claire has touched on. It's a lot of listening um, mainly in the nursery in, in the first year of school. Um, that's environmental sounds, that's oral blending, and that's initial sounds, that's rhyming, that's, um, that's uh, alliteration, that's all of those lovely listening skills that they really, really need. And that's such an important first skill. Um, and then it goes on to actually learning that sort of overt teaching. So we then show them what each sound looks like when it's written down. So children might by then know that their name begins with the sound M, mm, and then we'll teach them what the sound Mm, looks like which is also called the letter M. So we use the letter names alongside the, the sound um, and they will learn then um, there are lots of different phases but we start with phase two where they learn most of the sounds in the alphabet and then it goes on to phase three, four, five. It builds but in our reception class now they'll be learning phase two so they'll be learning the letter S, S the sound S this week. That's the first sound they learn in, in the scheme that we use. And then that will go on to um, mark making. Children, when they've learned a few sounds, get really excited. They get really sort of um, uh, motivated to start writing. And they might write things that don't look like words. They might just try mark making, writing down just 
um, odd letters, something they've seen, something they've learned that week, and they hopefully will then start telling you what those words say, even though they don't say the real word. They will just sort of um, start building up their confidence, and that's what we really want, that confidence is the really important thing that Claire touched on earlier. It's all about children wanting to write, about children trying to write, about children using the sounds that they've, they've learned, and um, even if it doesn't look right, it's fine. We love seeing them mark making, don't we? That's like the best best part when they really want to start writing something down. Um, then children will hopefully start applying what we have taught them, actually using the sounds, the blending and the segmenting to start writing words that do look like words or reading short words. So they'll start writing those, those short words down or they might start writing words that don't look like words, which is the next part of the journey, the sounding out new words. Um, so often children uh, get told every single word, how to write it, what the, the every single letter, so cats is C-A-T and um, table is T-A-B-L-E. Um, we try not to do that. We try to let children, again, build that confidence, use the sound they've learned, sound out words. They might look wrong. They might look silly to an adult, but generally as a reception teacher, we can decipher most funny words <laughs> because we know they're using the sounds they've learned. And we'll, we'll um, look at that next session. We're going to see if you can try being a child learning phonics and how it feels to use those sounds that really give you the confidence and empower you to start writing. And only then will children get to the final part of the journey, which is independent reading and writing. They have to go through all of these phases from our experience um, to then be able to write by themselves. And it's all of that trying and all of that getting it wrong and all of that confidence without, without a teacher saying that's wrong, that's wrong, this is how you spell this. It's them really, really getting that motivation and that confidence. And we will then start seeing independent reading and writing. But even when they go into year one and even year two and probably throughout most of their primary years, they're never going to get everything right. But we want them to have that power to, to try by themselves. So examples of learning. In this picture here, these are some of our nursery children who have been outside and they wanted to explore with the musical instrument. So they have, um, they were just experimenting to begin with and then they decided to create their own rhythms and then they copied each other's rhythm. Also, um, when we are outside like that, I asked the children about what they could hear. And so they could hear the um, engines of the boats and also the people walking along the promenade and some of the nature, they could um, hear some of the dogs that were barking. So it's really important that children can um, hone into the environmental sounds that they can hear and because then that differentiates the different sounds that we're teaching when we begin to teach our formal phonics. Um, mu uh, music is a wonderful way to introduce children to um, different pitches and also for them to explore the different sounds it's good for them to be able to walk around their school environment both inside and outside. And the children in the first picture, they are on their sound walk. And you can see some of them are holding their ears. We made um, headbands for them. And these were their big listening ears so that they could hear everything that was all around them. And some of the children even wanted to make a full circle um, to make sure that they were hearing everything. And it's again about the training. What can you hear? Um, some children hear some things and other children hear differently. It, this is a fun and engaging way and it helps to develop their concentration and also their language skills too. We've been teaching rhyme and this little girl in her video, she has shown her understanding of rhyme and you can see that she's not written anything but she's just using her words orally. I can cut on the mat. And that was one of the tasks that I'd asked the children to do as part of their virtual learning was could they draw two objects that rhyme? So this, these examples of children is when it sort of progresses more onto um, mark making. These are uh, a few pictures of children in the classroom. So they've done their talking, they've done their listening, and they're still not quite ready to write, but they're doing some other more extended things with phonics. Um, so children are then drawing and talking about what they've drawn. Again, it's still that really important part of phonics, which is the talking um, and explaining what, what it is. 
that's what we call mark making. Um, and then there's a little girl using some magnets to make words. So she's probably learned quite a few of the uh, phase two sounds and now she's ready to make words, but she's not writing yet and she may not have wanted to write at that time or she may have just been playing, but children need to have those different ways of making words within the classroom. And then there are some online games that we will show you later that um, one of the little girls in this picture is using. So she's hearing the word and then she's matching the word to the picture. And the word is also written there. So she's got the hearing and the, the letters and then matching it to the different pictures. So again, we've already said that phase one is so important. It's about the power of listening and just exposing children to lots of different ways that they can use their listening ears to hear sounds. So again, the environmental walks, um, they can do that by being outside or inside and just wearing the headbands was really good because the children felt it was real, really fun and it even motivated those ones that are a little bit less reluctant um, to make sure that they were listening really, really well and we called them our listening experts. Again, um, using instrumental sounds, um, using body percussion, clapping your hands, tapping your knees, can the children copy the rhythm that you've made or the pattern? Um, looking at rhythm and rhyme, Julia, Roberts, um, Julia Donaldson's books are wonderful because they um, often have um, rhyme in them and they are familiar stories for the children so the children can hear the rhyming words and usually they will finish um, the ending of the sentence. Again the alliteration, which one is the odd one out? You can um, make add, um, you know, like a potion and use objects within the classroom and see which one is different. Again, you're just really manipulating those sounds so that the children can hear that they're different. For my EL children, I might even have a visual as well, okay, rather than just always the auditory, just um, me speaking to them, I'll have visuals and that helps them just to develop those language and to associate um, the vocabulary. And um, it's a training children up to know that um, sounds can be loud and quiet and when um, they are outside, some children were even drawing some of those objects and they really, really did enjoy that. What I like to do in my class is, um, if your name begins with such um, a sound like S, you come first. And again, they've just got to really listen and tune in. Um, so that's really important and that's the message we're getting across. That phase one is the step, stepping stone and the building block to move on to phase two um, letter sounds in phonics. Um, this video here is of me doing some of a uh, rhyming words. I've got tree and bee. The bee is buzzing around the tree. Can you hear the two rhyming words? The bee is buzzing around the tree. Tree and bee are rhyming words. So there are lots of listening games that we can do with the children. Um, as Claire's touched on, the sort of body percussion. There are things, games called sort of sleeping giant, which is basically what we play with the children. You hide some bells. The children have to tend, to tend to be asleep if they're a giant. And then someone has to try and steal the bells and they have to listen to who's got them. It's just really, like Claire said, honing in on those listening skills, which is such an important part of phonics. Guessing what the sound is, matching an instrument. So you can play an instrument secretly behind a piece of cloth or something and the children have to guess what it is. Playing I spy with the children. I spy something beginning with. Um, or Silly Soup, which I will show you next. A little clip of me doing Silly Soup for the children. And then again, that rhyme, alliteration and online games. So this is just a little clip of an online game. Um, the children have to guess what the animal is. I think we get the gist of that. 
that. <laughs> um, and then this is a little clip of me. Um, this was during the virtual school experience. So this is one of the lessons that we, we sent home and for the children to play some Silly Soup at home. And then they sent us back videos of them playing Silly Soup. So Silly Soup is basically um, picking a few objects to go in some soup that start with the same sound and then having one that's the odd one out and the children have to try and pick out which one is the silly one, which one doesn't match. Okay, this time I'm going to ask if you know which one doesn't match. I am putting in some b -b -b bread. I'm putting in a b -b bowl and a b -b -b brick. I'm going to put in a paintbrush. Why is my soup silly? Bread, brick, bowl, paintbrush. Which one doesn't match? What do you think? I have the objects and I have one which is a do you know which one is the silly one it was the paintbrush that doesn't match I now just have objects in my silly suit okay, we're going to skip over this one we've talked about this one quite a lot now and um, so as much as we can teach children sounds and we can teach them to be ready for writing, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be ready. And one of the reasons about, uh, for this um, can be that children's hands just are not ready and they do not have the strength and the muscle and the bone structure yet. So in this picture, you may have seen this before. Um, on the left is a typical seven-year-old child's hand. And on the right is a typical toddler's hand. So toddler being sort of two, age two, three, maybe even four. So the children in our class. And if they don't have the bone structure yet and the muscle strength, they won't be able to hold a pencil. They'll just be very demotivated. It might be uncomfortable for them. So we make sure that in our class, we do lots of sensory play um, and strength play with their hands. So lots of Play-Doh um, to strengthen their hands, playing with pegs, children lifting up heavy objects like water outside, carrying buckets of sand, um, different uh, bricks building and throwing, and um, small objects, so those fine motor skills to make sure that their hands are, are, are giving them the strength to be able to one day hold a pencil. Because if you give a small child a pencil and they cannot hold it in their hands, they're like jelly, like this little child on this, on this uh, x-ray, then they just won't be even to, able to even hold a pencil. So we think that those, those strengthening skills and moving their hands and moving their body are just such an important part of getting them ready for writing. And core strength, that's um, like their gross motor skills as well. It's really important that children are able to hold their body because if we're expecting them to be able to write, sit at a table or even on the floor, they need to be able to sit and hold and support that, um, that core area. And if we think just as a tree needs a strong trunk to be able to hold its branches up and the stands the elements in its environment, a child requires a strong core to participate in life's daily activities and to be able to do that successfully. And essentially our core strength um, is the anchor of everything that, that they do. So in my environment this year, what I've done is I've created a yoga area where the children can go and do some stretches. Also in my mark making, I've made the paper at different um, heights so that some children can go underneath the table and look up. Perhaps they're not ready to hold their bodies up, um, you know, to be strong, they flop over. Um, and that also impacts on their fine motor skills in terms of not being able to hold their pencil correctly. And it's good to have different areas in your classroom for writing or mark making where children can lie on their tummy but hold up their head. Uh, and it might be that they've just not been exposed to that. Um, I know that a lot of children can either maybe just be put into their buggy through, uh, through a lot of their toddler um, years or they're carried. Um, and so that, that core is not strengthened and so it's weak. So that's something that um, we've noticed and we've read a lot of research and it's really important at this foundation um, stage in order for the children to be able to sit and be able to write. 
Um, and also looking at our classroom and our environment, having enriched literacy in lots of areas. Um, and that can just be um, having your daily stories with the children, having story books available in all areas of your classroom so that children can tell their own stories and that they can mark make. Uh, I know that um, some of my reluctant boys last year, what they wanted to do, they had amazing imaginations and they could verbally tell the most amazing story but as soon as you wanted them to write anything it was lost all motivation so I used to scribe for them and then they would do the illustration and they really enjoyed that because it's important for children to be able to use those communication skills before they actually put their um, you know, independent writing and making up their own stories. So in your mark making areas for children to practice with phonics, um, to have like the paint and the sand and the glitter and lots of um, interesting like um, little areas where they can have access to their mark making. I've got a writer's belt that I use for the children um, and toolboxes where they can just travel and take that inside or outside of the classroom. Um, hi, then we just got a, a question on the chat and it says, um, what stage should a child start using height suitable desk and chair for writing? So thank you for that question. And um, I think in our experience, um, we, we wouldn't really um, put children on a chair and table in reception until the last part of reception. So our children are now four and they're turning five. But when they go to year one, which is age five and six, they, they do their writing at a table and most of them seem to be ready by that stage. Would you agree, Claire? Yeah, they do. Yeah. And also the furniture is appropriate to the, the age and stage of the children. So if you look at nursery, there will be um, desks and chairs available for the children to mm. do some tabletop Yeah, activities. some children are ready, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, and some children actually just choose that they want to be in school and sit at the desk like the teacher. Yeah. Um, but it's not forced at all, but it's good to have that experience and that exposure so that it's not a brand new thing where they have to sit for a particular amount of time um, at a table. Yeah, hope that answers you. your question. Yeah, so there's no real age, but we think it's um, usually by the end of reception, it's appropriate um, during reception if they're ready. Um, just to touch on um, the, the picture here, you can see that um, where the stickers are, um, this little boy who's a very reluctant um, writer has had a go at writing Iron Man. So when we were speaking about the spelling, it doesn't matter. It's about what children, the signs the children can hear in words, having a go. And he was so proud of himself. And you can see that he's written Avengers and Captain America. Hmm. And I just think that's wonderful because that is just the next natural um, stepping stone for him. And when he's in year four, he'll be writing so independently hmm. and um, can access how to all those, the spelling rules and things like that. But at this stage, he has used the signs that he's learned and he's made his words or his version. Mm. And that's what we are looking for. Brilliant. So moving on from that, or sort of leading on from that, multi-sensory play in the environment is so important. Um, and we need to make sure there is mark making everywhere in the classroom for children to access uh, different kinds of mark making. So some children might want to um, uh, make marks in Play-Doh, they might want to make shapes of letters in Play-Doh or maybe just stamp in Play-Doh. Some children might want to write in glitter like Claire had on the page just before with their fingers or a paintbrush. Um, some children might want to just practice their fine motor skills with pegs and tweezers and to help with their, their hands and their, their um, muscle strength. Um, and so in my classroom at the moment, these two pictures are of my, my classroom, I've got an area which is meant to be the writing table, but um, just as the question that was asked before, children aren't ready to really sit at a table and do writing. There are a few children there, but most of them weren't that interested, so I made it into kind of a digger land. Um, where children can go over and mostly the boys because they're usually the ones that don't want to write they can go over and have a look at the diggers and then they've seen that i've drawn a road on there and i've drawn some letters with some of the bricks so they're more interested to go over and have an incentive to write and then yesterday i looked on the table and some children had continued drawing the road 
they'd, they'd done drawn all the lines on the road. They'd, they'd then attempted to write some words. There were some letters on that table. So this was just paper on a table. So they can write, um, they can stand up and write if they want to. They can sit down if they want to. And they were using the resources in the area, the, the um, letters and sounds pictures we had up and then some some of the children were then looking at the other resources which is notebooks and chalkboards and sticky notes and then they were trying to write on those different things as well so it kind of leads them into the area and gives them an incentive to write which is really nice this week. So in our school um, we use a blend of all three schemes there's Reach Out Ink and Letters and Sounds and Jolly Phonics. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Read Write Ink trained and I, I love Read Write Ink. Um, it, is, uh, it has lots of different resources which to buy, but unfortunately it is quite expensive. Um, you can get some things online, but it is a full scheme of work from the first sound that you teach, which is mmm, to um, teaching 10 and 11 year olds how to do grammar and punctuation and things. Um, we use it in this school for the letter shapes because each letter has a rhyme and a sort of like a little story that goes with it. Um, for example, the mm, we teach it as a, a, little, a little girl called Maisie stood next to two mountains and we say Maisie mountain mountain and the children remember then how to write an mm and the d -d 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 is a dinosaur. They love that one because you go around the dinosaur's bottom and up his long neck and down to his feet. So they always love to d -d -d -d. And, and then it progresses on to little books that the, ch the children can read with very, very easy words in. There are questions, there are set um, workbooks. It's a lovely scheme, but it is very, very expensive. And then so we use letters and sounds as well to support us with the planning. And that's just the order that we teach the sounds in. And, uh, and then letters and sounds does have a website with lots of free resources on to help with the, um, the ordering of the sounds and different planning, like teachers, teachers actual plans that you can follow. Um, and I'm Jolly uh, Phonics Trained and I like that because it's got the songs and the actions to help the children associate sounds to the letters. It's good because it's a multi-sensory approach um, and we know that children learn so differently uh, with some things auditory or visual or kinesthetic. So this again is also a seven year programme for the whole school and it focuses on phonics, grammar, spelling and punctuation. Um, and there are lots of resources there. You can access the songs on YouTube. And for us, we've taken like the best parts of all of the schemes, because I think when you are international, so many people bring so many different, um, really good teaching practices and they share that and you take the best bits. Uh, and that's worked really well for us. Mm. Um, so I think, it, it, for us, it has been successful just taking a little bit from each of these schemes. Yeah, definitely. It's worked well for us. Um, so on this page, and I think we will share this, or Kate, Erica will share this PowerPoint where you can click on these and they do take you to different websites. So the Read Write Inc. website, you can have a look on there. You may be interested in buying things or you can just get some ideas. Letters and Sounds is, is um, the, again, the planning that we use. Jolly Phonics is what the thing that Claire was talking about that she's trained in that has some lovely resources. And this Jolly Phonics Actions is this little um, clip of the video here where the children use the actions to remember the sounds as well. So they have so many different um, ways of remembering how to write the sounds and what they, and what they look like and sound like. And then Phonics Play is um, the game that I showed earlier with the noises. There's other things like that on there as well. So I will share this and you can click on these links to take you to some good websites. So um, just to conclude, thank you so much for listening. I'm sorry it's been a long time. We have got so much to say and we look forward to the next session. Um, but for this session to conclude, we think phonics should always be really fun. And we use puppets like you can see, we use games and songs and rhymes and, and um, children really need to be interested in writing if they're going to want to do it one day by themselves. It's a journey that children all follow differently and you can't, you can't force it upon children. Um, some, sometimes they're not ready and then one day they just want to start writing and it's an amazing light bulb moment when they pick up a pencil or they, um, they show you a story they've written or, and that doesn't always happen on day one. It can be um, far into the journey, but it will happen one day. Um, and children need lots of preparation in the early years. So we've talked a lot today about children listening, about children um, having those skills that come before writing. And the environment is really key to supporting phonics learning. And we'll talk about that again next time as well a bit more. 
So in the next session, we will focus on the actual um, phonic sounds and have a demonstration of how we would teach a typical um, phonic sound for you. And also looking at fine motor skills and how we can develop them within the early years. How it feels as an adult to learn phonics and also making sure that our environments are key to success as well and that children can access discreetly um, phonics resources. And also just um, about um, looking at um, the formation and different keywords and phrases um, that we will use um, to support our phonics. So thank you so much. Um, we've had a, a couple questions in the chat box, but if anyone wanted to share anything, um, some lovely good practice they have, or if they want to ask anything, would you like to put a question in the box or put on your microphone now? Um, we'll just give it 10 seconds or so to see if there's anything. If not, then we are finished now. And um, we're going to show you a feedback screen on the next, the final slide, we promise it's the final one. <laughs> um, if you would uh, send us some feedback, that would be absolutely brilliant, please, because Kate, Erica, who organised this, would love to know. Um, so it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions or anything to share. So we would love to see you next time um, in three weeks time. Um, if you want to come to our second session, we'll go a bit deeper into how to teach uh, the phase two phonics. Um, and yeah, that's it for us today. Thank you so well, thank much. Thank you for joining. So this is the feedback um, QR code if you do have a reader. Otherwise, there's a website um, you can go to. And again, we'll share this, this um, PowerPoint with you. So thank you, everybody. Goodbye from me, Anastasia. Goodbye <laughs> from me, Claire. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>